Are electric boats more expensive? How long does the battery last? What's the charge time? Are electric boats as fast as traditional boats? What's the maintenance like? How does the battery cool down? If you clicked on this video, surely some of these questions have run through your mind, and that's normal. There's always a lot of uncertainty when new technology rolls out. The electric revolution has completely changed the automotive industry, and it was only a matter of time before electrification made its way into the marine industry, where combustion engines are infamously more inefficient and produce way more emissions than their automotive counterparts. Still, the technology is very much in its infancy, but it's been growing rapidly, and you'd be surprised at the number of electric boats, engines, and personal watercraft that are available in the market. And that's a good thing because in the near future, it will make boating a lot more accessible to families that can't spend thousands or tens of thousands of dollars annually in gas and maintenance. In this video, we're going to show you five benefits and five disadvantages of electric boats, personal watercraft and engines. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding of the current electric technology applications in the marine industry. And most importantly, you'll be able to decide if you're ready to trade in your combustion powered boat for a cleaner and quieter electric engine. And if you're on the hunt for your first boat, depending on how you plan to use it, you might find going electric the right option for you. Hi, if you're new to the channel, I'm Adrian and my brother Alejandro is a yacht broker. We've loved boats since we were little growing up on the Caribbean beaches of Venezuela. We started this channel two years ago, originally as a yacht tender guide to showcase the boats that Alejandro spends the most time on and we just recently rebranded to Yacht Bros. I'm now creating content full time, so please let me know in the comments below if these videos are helpful or if there are specific topics you would like us to cover. And please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future videos. Now enough of that, let's go inside the electric pavilion in the Miami International Boat Show, where Nautical Ventures and Ford are sponsoring the first dedicated showcase of electric technology within a boat show here in Florida. Right away, you can tell 2023 is shaping up to be the year of electric. In previous shows, there weren't that many electric boats on display because the technology was still too young and there wasn't much demand. About a month ago, however, we were blown away by the number of electric boats on display at the Dusseldorf Boat Show in Germany. In Europe, there seems to be a lot more demand due to environmental regulations and the fact that gas is more expensive there too. Back in Florida, Nautical Ventures, which happens to specialize in importing European brands, is aiming to power up the demand for electrification. So what are the benefits of owning an electric boat or motor. To start off, they are much more environmentally friendly. Now I'm saying this only from an emissions point of view since the jury is still out there on whether the sourcing of the batteries negates that argument. However, once the electric boats are completed and on the water, they produce zero emissions and do not release harmful pollutants into the air or water. This makes them a much more cleaner and more sustainable option than traditional gasoline or diesel powered boats, which can be a significant source of pollution in waterways. The next benefit of electric boats and motors is that they are much quieter than traditional boats, making them ideal for use in areas where noise levels are a concern, such as residential areas or wildlife habitats. Now, if you're cruising at more than 20 knots offshore, it's not going to be a quiet ride with the wind hitting the boat and everyone on it, especially in rough seas, but it'll still be an improvement. Where the quiet factor really matters is when you're in lakes or the intercoastal waterway, for example, and just enjoying a pleasant cruise. You'll be able to communicate easier with passengers on board, unless you're like Alejandro and other boaters in Miami that love blasting music. But I digress. This next benefit is an important one as I believe it will make boating more financially accessible to families and that is the lower operating cost of electric boats and motors. Electric boats have significantly lower operating costs than traditional boats as they require less maintenance and virtually no fuel cost. The cost of charging an electric boat battery is also much lower than the cost of refueling a traditional boat which can run into the tens of thousands of dollars annually depending on the size and use of the boat. Another important benefit is the charging infrastructure. While this has been a real bottleneck in the mainstream adoption of electric automotive vehicles, what's great about electric boats is that they can be charged virtually anywhere since most marinas already have shore power, which is enough for level one and in some cases level two charging. Now don't worry, we'll get into the different levels of charging soon, but for now, just know that with level one charging, you're gonna need to charge for around eight to 12 hours or even overnight, depending on the size of the battery. But you can rest easy knowing that you'll be able to charge virtually anywhere there is a 120 or 240 volt AC electrical outlet. There's also near universal plug compatibility within the EV charging industry, and there are even portable chargers that you can take with you to level up charging speeds. Companies like Evectrify are also starting to build out a robust infrastructure of superchargers for recreational and commercial applications. The last benefit is that electric boats are generally easier to operate than traditional boats, as they require less maintenance and have fewer moving parts. This makes them a great option for novice boaters or those who want a low maintenance boating experience. There are no oil changes to worry about, and the MFD or multifunction display on new electric boats gives you all the information you need to know about the health of your electric boat and when the software update is also available. 
Now that we got the pros out of the way, let's take a look at the cons of owning an electric boat and why they might not be suited for you just yet. One of the biggest challenges of electric boats is their limited range. While electric boats can travel farther on a single charge than they could just a few years ago, they still can't travel as far as traditional boats on a full tank of gas. This can be a concern for boaters who need to travel long distances like anglers or commercial boaters for extended periods of time. Now the range wouldn't be much of an issue if charging times were fast. Unfortunately, battery technology is still in development and that leads us to the next point charging time. Electric boats require a significant amount of time to charge, which can be inconvenient for boaters on the go. Depending on the battery size and charging system, it can take several hours or even overnight to fully charge an electric boat battery. So let's talk briefly about the different charging levels. Level 1 charging is the slowest and least powerful type of charging. It uses a standard 120 volt AC electrical outlet and can deliver up to 1.5 kilowatts of power. Level 1 charging is best suited for small electric boats with relatively small battery banks that can be fully charged overnight. A typical level one charging time for a small electric boat with a 10 kilowatt per hour battery might take 8 to 12 hours. The benefit of this again is that it's readily available in most marinas. Then there is level 2 charging, which is faster than level 1 charging and uses a 240 volt AC electrical outlet. It can deliver up to 7.2 kilowatts of power, which means it can charge a battery bank more quickly. This is often used for large electric boats that have a higher power demand as well as for public charging stations. A typical level 2 charging time for a 10 kilowatt per hour battery would be around 3 to 4 hours. Now if you're really in a hurry, you can opt to supercharge, also known as DC fast charging or level 3 charging. This is the fastest and most powerful type of electric boat charging. It uses a high power DC charging station to deliver up to 350 kilowatts of power to the battery. Supercharging can charge an electric boat battery bank to 80% capacity in as little as 30 minutes, making it a convenient option for longer boating trips where quick recharging is needed. However, not all boats are equipped to handle this type of high power charging. And while you can supercharge in minutes, it's going to come at a cost to you in terms of the health of the battery system and that takes us to the next disadvantage which is battery lifespan. Electric boat batteries have a limited lifespan and will eventually need to be replaced. The cost of replacing the battery can be significant and it's important to properly maintain and care for the battery to maximize its lifespan. In other words, slow and steady wins the charging race for now. Moving on to the next disadvantage of electric boats and motors is the initial cost. Just like Teslas were quite expensive when they first rolled out, the same is to be expected with any new technology. Electric boats can be more expensive than traditional boats due in part to the cost of the battery and charging system as well as all the R&D involved. However, this cost may be offset over time by the lower operating costs of electric boats as discussed earlier. And finally, the last disadvantage of electric boats is the weight. Electric boat batteries tend to be heavy, which can impact the handling and performance of the boat. Additionally, the added weight of the battery may reduce the boat's maximum speed. Now, this is not the case with all electric boats as some manufacturers are coming up with unique designs and materials to lower the weight and increase performance. The Orca personal watercraft from the Canadian brand Taiga, for example, has a carbon fiber hull and the speed is electronically limited to 62 miles per hour in wild mode in order to maximize its range. Vision Marine Technologies is also an electric boat and outboard manufacturer that is powering this Axopar 22 with a 180 horsepower motor. Just last year, they set a boat speed record of 109 miles per hour in Lake of the Ozarks, so I'm confident weight won't be considered a disadvantage for much longer. So now that you know what the pros and cons of electric boat ownership are, should you make the jump from combustion to electric? At a high level, there are about six different categories of boaters. Let's take a look first at the type of boaters that could make the switch to electric. The most common type of boater is the recreational boater, and this is most likely where you fit in. These are boaters who use their boats for leisure activities such as fishing, water skiing, wakeboarding, or just cruising with the family for the day, also known as day boating. If you do or plan to do all those activities without going too far offshore for an extended period of time, then you can easily be an early adopter of this new technology and enjoy all those activities in the peaceful quiet of nature. Now we can't forget about canoeists and kayakers. Technically they are boaters who use paddles instead of motors, however more and more powered versions are coming out on the market to give the rower an extra boost. These electric kayaks are quite similar to electric bikes and would benefit the most from the quiet of an electric engine. Then there are sailors. Now. I'm on the fence with this category because on one hand, most of the sailing is done under wind power since the motor is only used when the wind is not favorable or you're entering port. On the other hand, a lot of sailors are away from marinas and charging ports for extended periods of time. So the key question here is whether solar charging can provide enough power to sail boats and dinghies engines. If you fall under any of those categories, chances are you could seriously consider electric as an alternative. Now let's take a look at the categories of boaters that most likely need to continue turning to combustion engines. <laughs> 
Power boaters are what I would call performance recreational boaters. They do similar activities, but with a heavier emphasis on speed, range, and durability. I'm talking about those large center consoles between 30 to 60 feet with three, four, five, or even six engines yielding thousands of horsepower and where a single engine can cost more than an entry level boat. Now these guys love to fish way offshore in the roughest conditions or enjoy taking long trips to the Keys or the Bahamas. So since range is a big factor for them, they'll have to keep guzzling gas for the near future. Similarly, if you're a yacht owner with a larger, luxurious boat that is used for extended cruising or entertaining, there's simply not a scalable electric solution yet to deliver the amount of power required to move those big ships. Also, chances are if you're spending millions of dollars on these boats, then you can afford the hefty gas and maintenance bill. Then there are commercial, military, and law enforcement boaters. Most likely, they'll still have to rely on gas for the same reasons as power boaters, since they tend to be on the water for extended periods of time too. However, Photon Marine is already supplying commercial boats with up to 300 horsepower engines that can have an extended range by mounting multiple battery packs. Overall, electric boats offer a cleaner, quieter, and more cost-effective alternative to traditional boats. As battery technology continues to improve, electric boats will become an increasingly attractive option for boaters looking to enjoy the water while minimizing their impact on the environment. So what do you think? Are you ready to join the electric revolution? Let us know in the comments below and also feel free to ask any questions and we'll do our best to answer them or even make a video out of them. Now, if you made it this far, first of all, let me apologize for all the puns, but more importantly, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't so more people can learn about electric boats and boating in general. We've got a lot of cool videos lined up this year and we're looking forward to being more active on YouTube and engaging with you all more. I'm Adrian and thanks for tuning in.